You are listening to episode 89 of the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how to ride the elephant. You are listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. I'm your host, Master Certified Coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week on the podcast, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most and have a lot more fun in the process. All right, let's get started. Well, hello, my friends. Today, we're going to be talking about invisible creatures, elephants in the room. We're going to talk about what that even means and how to handle elephants in the room the less stress, more fun way. So please, as you're listening today, imagine an elephant. You can even decorate your elephant if you'd like. If you have a snazzy, smart, warm elephant in your mind, we are ready to go. I've heard this phrase my entire life, and I know what it means, but not everybody listening may have this as part of their cultural idioms. I did a little research, went to my good friend Wikipedia, and they have a lovely overview of the phrase, the history of it, etc. That's linked in the show notes if you want to grab that. I'm going to read to you for just a moment. The expression elephant in the room is a metaphorical idiom in the English language describing an important or enormous topic, question, or controversial issue that is obvious or that everyone knows about, but no one wants to discuss it. They don't want to mention it. And let me get back to reading. I was interpreting. And at least some of the people are avoiding it because it's personally, socially, politically embarrassing, controversial, inflammatory, or dangerous. Do, do, do. <laughs> it is based on the idea or thought that something as conspicuous as an elephant can appear to be overlooked in codified social interactions. I have to love any sentence that has the word codified social interactions in it. And apparently, there was a fable written in 1814, and then it's, it was kind of a recurring thing. Dostoevsky and Twain wrote about it, etc. Go read in the show notes. You might just be delighted by the history of this as well. What? would I like to do to turn it into like kind of like a fun learning teaching opportunity is to summarize that idiom into how we see it in practice. An elephant might be in the room, but go unseen by everyone in the room because not everybody has a frame of reference. So it might be like elephant. What? That's no elephant. That's a tapestry with an elephant woven into it. So an example of this is not seeing discrimination or bias, because some people literally can't see what they don't know to look for. An elephant in a room might be seen by the people in a room, but be left alone or ignored, since pointing out the elephant might cause conflict, and people have different conflict styles. For example, a change in policy at work that's causing negative impacts to employees and clients, and the elephant in the room might be like, this is actually really disrupting the business, but nobody wants to bring it up because some people may be conflict avoidant or etc. Another reason people might avoid talking about that elephant in the corner is because there's a potential loss of safety or status if anyone activates the conversation. For example, talking about salaries. There was an elephant in the room in my life. I was talking to a colleague who happened to be male. We were performing the same exact job function, same job title, similar backgrounds. And to be blunt, I actually was really better at my job than he was, if word on the street was any indication. And he was getting paid 20% more than me. It was shocking. That was an elephant in the room. And it was hard to talk about because I felt a loss of status and being really embarrassed that I was being paid so much less. Although, hello. Some of us get paid differently because of our body parts. That is just fact. So, whew, that's a lot of reasons to avoid seeing, pointing out, or walking right up to the elephant in the room. 
I think there's a couple of reasons that the elephants might seem to be hiding behind the curtains. Let's look at those reasons that elephants hide behind the curtains. We're going to look just at, at a couple of factors. One is the conflict avoidance, and the other is a power imbalance. The first, conflict avoidance, you have to start by defining for you and the other people in the proverbial room what conflict is. How do you define it? My simplest definition of conflict is that there's a difference in interpretation. And the source could be differences in values, standards, expectations, communication styles. And we might or we might not see those differences obviously, like they may be things that are happening inside individuals, inside your own mind and body, and inside the minds and bodies of other people in the room. Yet we can sometimes see that conflict avoidance is leaving the elephant ignored in the corner, poor elephant, and that there's different conflict management styles. And there's a spectrum of conflict comfort, right? Some people look forward to it. They actually enjoy what some people would define as conflict. They just see it as, oh, we're just coming to an understanding or we're just sharing ideas. They see it as a very positive thing. Some people are very neutral. Maybe they just don't see the, they don't see that there's a, a conflict or difference of interpretation at all. And if they do, it's like, yeah, it's no big deal. And then there are people who avoid conflict at all costs. They see it as very negative. It's very threatening. It's very triggering. It's, it's emotional, or it could mean that something's gone wrong. For some people, they have a very wide spectrum of how they may define conflict. In some cases, it's like, oh, this is just a conversation. We're just understanding each other. And another person might interpret just a question as initiating conflict. People have so many definitions of conflict and so many individual styles for once they've decided something is a disagreement or a difference of interpretation or a conflict, how they respond to it. So as I've been very transparent on the podcast, I have a diagnosis of complex PTSD and all the way through my childhood into my 20s and and even 30s and 40s, I would code interactions conflict very quickly. So what I mean by that is something would happen and I would immediately feel like, oh, this is a problem. We're disagreeing. We're in conflict. It felt like something went wrong and I would trigger very quickly. It would, anytime there was someone looking at me with any sort of dissatisfaction, my safety felt massively threatened. And I wouldn't respond with a, a calm, this is no big deal, we're just having a conversation. And I certainly did not see those interactions as positive or something with a net benefit. Now let's talk about the, when there's an elephant in the room, when there's, there's something that people are avoiding talking about because of the consequence of pointing it out, this elephant in the corner, it's so funny. I'm actually pointing to the corner of the room I'm recording in as if there's this beautiful elephant over there. I'm so glad she's here with me today. <laughs> Since Dog Bailey's in the backyard, I'm glad I have my elephant in the room for this podcast. Imagine in your mind's eye an elephant in the corner of your room. What is your style? Would you go right up and fight with it? Would you use logic to sweet talk it? I think this is so interesting to observe that when there is a difference of opinion, when there's a conflict, how sometimes people can respond to someone who's having a very emotional reaction by trying to be very logical. And that is usually like trying to mix oil and water. You can swirl it around. It might make something, but it's probably not going to mix those molecules. The other strategy is running away. Oh, there's an elephant in the room. Get out, get out. And then there's just ignoring it. Elephant? No, I don't know. There's nothing in the room. Just me recording the podcast. (laughs) The reason sometimes we select the strategies of either interacting with or avoiding the elephant in the room is because there's a perceived power imbalance. 
reflect on your own history. Are there times when you felt inhibited speaking up because another person had more status or power than you did? We may not have used those words, status or power, but I think humans are extremely motivated by status, even if we wouldn't necessarily use that word. And all status means is that you're perceived to be a valuable member of the group and you're safe. And whether you have an elevated opinion in the minds of the group as it's perceived. Are there times when you maybe you've managed a team and or even managed or facilitated a meeting or a discussion and you've noticed people, you can tell the machine in their head is working, but they're choosing not to speak up. It is possible that it could be their conflict management style, but it also could be because they perceive an imbalance of power. And I know this sounds a little dramatic, like at this board meeting of like, there's a power imbalance. And what shall we do about this elephant? I shall decide. <laughs> we are going to ignore it. Um, but really, think about the times when you yourself or someone else avoided the elephant in the room. And imagine, reflect back on that. Was there a subtle power play? Were there power dynamics that amplified that person's natural or preferred conflict management style? It's fun to think about all the different kinds of elephants and all the different kinds of rooms um, as we think of this idiom. There's elephants in the room in organizations, uh, in teams. It can show up in interpersonal relationships. And yes, you can have an elephant in the room inside your own self. So we can employ these different strategies, the fight, run, avoid, or we can try a new strategy when there's an elephant in the room. And I'd like to offer a new strategy that came to mind through something I was going through of riding the elephant. What? What does that even mean anyway? <laughs> when I think, so there's an elephant in the room, we're either avoiding it or we're trying to use logic or we're trying to shoo it out of the room or, um, or we're marching right up to it and pointing in its face. And then I'm like, what would it be like if when there's an elephant in the room, someone was willing to lead, acknowledging the elephant and befriending that beautiful, magnificent beast and riding it into the open. I think riding the elephant means seeing the elephant as not something to be ignored or avoided, but as an opportunity for adventure and connection. When we choose to ride the elephant in the room, we choose curiosity and courage over fear and ignorance. When we ride the elephant, we open ourselves up to new possibilities for ourselves and others. Is it risky? Sure. Maybe it's dangerous to ride an elephant. I don't know. I haven't done it. Maybe I should. And I love this visual of the elephant in the room. Why it's such a fun picture. Is It's like it's this, it's this massive, beautiful creature. And it's in the room and everybody's like just ignoring it. It's just not there. And that yet this idea of just being like, aha, I'm going to ride the elephant into the room and we are going to face this together. So let's talk about different kinds of elephant in the rooms with organizations or teams. Maybe there's a policy decision, a process, or a relationship between teams or individuals on a team. What is not being addressed directly? Or what is being dealt with in a roundabout kind of way? There's the elephant in the room and everybody's just like, I don't know, there's just this dark spot in the corner. Maybe we need paint, right? There, it's, it's there, it's not being addressed, or there's like a kind of a weird solution. And then think about in your interpersonal relationships. You know, what happens if you point out the elephant, climb up and ride it into the middle of the relationship? The People in my personal life that I have the most frequent, transparent, open, fun interactions with are with my kids. You know, if you don't have teenagers at home, I think you should get some. They, everyone said it was just going to be awful and fraught and dramatic, and it has just been probably the best time of my life. So go get you some teenagers or invite mine over. They're awesome. So 
I'm practicing riding elephants in in conversations with my kids. I did it just last night. I said, hey, thing two, you know, you don't have to answer this. You, We don't have to talk about it. I just want to let you know something on my mind. And if it's something you want to discuss, I'm here for it. It was really awesome because, again, my default preference tendency, I would love to avoid conflict at all costs. And I code a lot of things as conflict, including just saying my opinion openly. It's something I've been experimenting so much more. In fact, right now I'm in a period of my life where my filter seems to be a little bit broken. I don't know. Does this Is this just going to happen more and more the more I practice this? Possibly. But I am, I'm riding elephants all over town. <laughs> and it's very interesting to see the results. Not trying to hurt anybody or cause a stampede, but being willing to go in and, and say things that normal, normal me, the Lisa that I've known for the first few decades of my life, would have just kept her mouth shut. Thank you very much. Now, let's talk about where the most curious elephants are hiding out inside ourselves. How do you know if there are elephants in the room in the relationship with yourself? I'll give you a couple of clues. One is your goals are not coming to fruition. You're setting a goal and you're not meeting it. And I don't mean like, listen, you're not ever going to hear from Coach Lisa that like hitting a goal when you decided makes you anything. To me, achieving a goal doesn't translate into a different identity unless you decide it does. So I have ideas about goals That's a topic for another conversation. And if you have decided to set a goal for yourself or to develop a new habit or to test new things and the experiments, you're you're avoiding it, you're starting and stopping, these kinds of things can be an indicator that there's an elephant in the room of your soul, (laughs) in your heart and mind. There may be something that you're not acknowledging because you might feel embarrassed about yourself. You know, remember all those reasons people avoid elephant in the rooms is that it's uncomfortable personally, socially, politically, that it's embarrassing, controversial, inflammatory, or dangerous. So you might be seeing conflicts in yourself between what you value and how you behave It's so cool to just look at, like, what am I creating in my life? Like, what are the results? Am I getting closer to my dreams or am I just kind of staying in in dreaming and planning phase? See whether there's some elephants that you could befriend and climb on and ride. And yes, this is a perfect example where coaching is incredibly valuable. Some of us are very self-aware and we can look at ourselves very objectively and some of us need support with that. And a coach will see your elephants in a way that you may not. That is where I am masterful and humble. (laughs) I can see elephants. I can see elephants everywhere. It's so powerful to have that outside perspective because as I tell my clients, I haven't heard this story before. So I, I, I'm I not just skipping over the familiar plot lines. I'm able to really stay with you and, and see the elephants in the room in my clients' minds. So what's the advantage of learning to ride the elephants? Besides all the, the great courage and curiosity that it can bring into your life, well, the biggest advantage to learning to ride the elephants in the room is that you cannot change or deal with anything you're not willing and ready to acknowledge. When you practice riding the elephants in the room in your life, you will learn more about your default conflict style. You will learn more about what you are willing to be curious about, what you're willing to walk up and say hello to or what you're ignoring or avoiding. This week, go out into your world and be on the lookout for elephants in the room. Notice in in the organizations and teams that you're in, in your individual relationships and inside yourself, what you can learn about yourself and others around their conflict response style. Are you seeing power dynamics that are 
causing elephants to pop up in the corners of the room. I have a a friend who is in an organization where permission to speak freely is not granted, and there's just a whole group of elephants. Being willing to start with curiosity, observation, and then seeing if there are a couple elephants in the corner of your life that you would like to practice courageously riding into the open so that you and others can expand and grow. What a fun image. I hope that this was uh, like visual. Like I hope that you have like some fun pictures in your head after this conversation. It has been fun to hang out with my imaginary elephant friend today. And until next time. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying the podcast, please rate and review wherever you listen. This will help other listeners find the show and bring less stress, more fun out into the world. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next week.